Hello, this is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, 1st, January the 31st, 2019. Please remember to subscribe and ring that bell. And I'm going to turn this right over to Miss Vegas. Hi, everyone. Hopefully you had a good trading day because I know that we did. Uh, so certainly I want to just give you guys a little list of uh, what we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to give you guys a little update on Cron because you know, Jim's like been talking about this for a while. And then we're going to talk about Facebook because I just want to give you guys a quick update on my options. And then we're going to talk about BTG. We're going to talk about GE. We're going to talk about the bonus pick, PYDS. What happened with that today? And then I have another bonus for you guys. So stay tuned and let's get started. So first one is Cron. Well, you guys know Cron is a marijuana stock. And, um, you know, Jim's been bullish on this long time. And he actually called from $10 stock. He said this stock's going to go to 20 bucks. And if you guys are listening to these videos, you would have definitely definitely been banking on this stock and i actually know people that have messaged me and even just visited the room and i had one person tell me today that they made good money on cron because they've had it for weeks and thanks to jim's alert so jim i'm gonna just turn it over to you because it had a beautiful beautiful move today yep. and went over the 20 bucks went to 2035 pulled back but i'm gonna let you talk about what's going on with cron and what you kind of see going forward on that stock well vegas and i've been very bullish on this for almost six months now solid and we've called it out quite a bit in the room and we played the pullbacks and the ups and the downs on it and the last time we called it out it was right around 650 right down in this area right in here and it ran all the way up and then it, it had that news about Oh, you know, what was the name of that cigarette company, Miss Vegas? Oh, the Marlboro? Yeah. They got, they got, in my, they invested a lot of money in this company, and then it pulled back to the support area, which was right around $10. And in the room, I said, okay, she's getting ready for another breakout. And it's been a 20-day breakout. It bounced off the 100 right here on the yearly chart. And then also hit the 50, and then we had the golden cross here on the yearly chart, which was back on, oh, somewhere around the 15th. So I'm going to pull up the 20-day chart right now and show you where we called this thing out. And that's right there. And that was down here at $10.15. And I've said this over and over again in, you know, on or some of our aftermarket reports and about every day in the room, been calling this out. So we, today was the day where we hit the $20 mark, and that was, was my final resistance on this chart. And when I got back from lunch, Vegas said, hey, Jim, it hit 2035. And she actually bought an option in today, and she, I think she's yeah. had a couple options in it. So I'm going to pull up the five-day now, put up five-day, five-minute, get a little look at it. Maybe the 15 will be a better chart to look at. Yeah, 15 is a little bit better. I had a solid, well, I mean, this thing bounces up and it pulls back, bounces up and it pulls back. And yesterday was a great breakout and it pulled back to support level, which I had right around here in this little channel right here. You see where I drew it up that day. So it came right and hit back that top of that channel. And then after hours, it started bouncing up a little bit. And then we had another big breakout today. And it did it finally I said Vegas this is going to be the day where we're going to hit that twenty dollars and I haven't been telling her that I just been telling her we're going to hit twenty and so here we did we broke that twenty and then we dipped on down and dipped about fifty cents after it hit that well it dipped more than that really it dipped about eighty then here we are at close again at nineteen ninety five after hours so she's going to Look to me like we might get us another double top breakout on this thing. And my resistance on this right now, I have to draw me a new resistance. And you set double 15 minute candle right there, about 2031. We had a 2035 high. And we'll put a new support line in here at 1948. Right about there. 
and I'll put a little pivot point right in here, another first support maybe. And I'm just kind of charting this out to where I think it could pull back. So I got a 1975 for the first support on this thing. It looks to me like after hours we're going to go ahead and bounce up past that 20 again. We're here at 1995. So this is probably one of my best picks that I've ever did. Not that I've ever done, but definitely one that was consistent in a 20-day period. We had a 20-day run up, and I'm I was very pleased with this. And I didn't, you know, I was in and out of this all the way up. And you know, I, I, I'm just very pleased that we finally today we hit that hit that mark at $20. And if I keep talking about this for a few more minutes, you might see that 20 pop up here on the time and sales. But we've got other stocks we want to talk about, and this is one that Vegas is real proud of today. And we just wanted to bring it back up. We talked about it yesterday that she got in it after hours. She was all excited in the aftermarket report. And Vegas, you want to talk about it? Yeah. So just briefly, like, you know, I was just telling you guys, you know, we, you guys all know um, that we focus on really trying to help small account. And I really focus on that a lot. And especially on options land, because that is where I really believe that you can grow your account faster than grow, um, than on stocks. Um, that's just from my experience and from what I'm seeing. And, you know, Jim can start vouching soon when he tells you what's happening with his account challenge. Um, because as you know, he started an account challenge with a small 500, but here's an example. So you guys know, yesterday I was telling you all that I bought a Facebook option call based on the earnings. And I bought the ones that expired tomorrow, February 1st. And I bought the option call of a strike price. So I was forecasting that it would go to 157.50, meaning that if it finally got there or went higher, my option call, my value of this uh, option would be worth more money. So I paid a dollar twenty for a contract, which is equals one hundred and twenty dollars was my investment. That's all I put in. I only bought one because, again, options. You know, I want to go small. I'm not looking to go in big at this time unless I'm in the super, super cheap, but I still want to remain um, focused. So I bought one contract. I paid $120 for it. And after hours, boy, oh boy, <laughs> Facebook was ripping and you guys heard us talk about it on the video. So I said to you guys, I'll give you an update today. Well, this morning, the stock was doing really well. Analyst actually said they were looking at around 173. I just figured, you know what, I'd be happy if I make $1,000 on it. I mean, that's a little bit, you know, you might think, oh, my gosh, that is so greedy. But I kind of had like an exit plan. Like I wanted to get $1,000 profit, and that was my target. That was my goal based on the tape, based on the chart. I was watching it like for a good, almost a good hour uh, right after the open, and it actually pulled back a little. But anyhow, long and story, it finally got my $1,000, and I was able to close that. I think Jim can show you guys. Um, I finally did sell the option call around, I think it was there at 1036 this morning. Yep. And uh, I sold it, as you guys can see right there in the picture. So I did sell it for $12.60. You know, I actually had a chance to sell it for like $13.50 and I just, you know, didn't do it. So that was my mistake. But nevertheless, I still executed. I sold it $12.60. Very happy. Met my goal. And my net profit was a thousand one forty on a hundred and twenty dollar investment. So you got to take my twelve sixty minus the one twenty. My net was eleven forty. <clears throat> so you know what? One of my best options I've ever made. And this just goes to prove that if you do have a small account, what a small trade could have done for your account. So this is just uh, very happy with it, and I hope to continue to find good option setups that obviously can work out not to say they will all work out this could have definitely gone against me and i would have been out of the trade i might have even lost my 120 dollars. so uh but in the end i didn't and uh very very pleased about this and if my dad's listening dad see that impressive so because he loves listening to my youtube he's learning a lot actually yep. about the market so that's great so thanks a lot. I'm glad I gave you guys the update. And congratulations to other people that might have bought the call as well. And, um, so Jim, yeah. And as she... Oh yeah, and then we got Facebook puts today, risky puts. But I'm going to let Jim talk about that because it was him that suggested it. 
and gave the idea on the Facebook put. So we're actually forecasting that it's going to pull back. And Jim can talk about the one that we bought and why he sees uh, what he sees on the chart there. Well, this is my second. Excuse me. This is my second day that I've, I've bought an option. So I'm I'm a virgin to when it comes to options and with Vegas's help and influence she finally convinced me and talked me into doing it and I've been trading for a very long time so I want to give her kudos for now getting me involved in this option trading and my first option trade was AMD and I made 138 percent on it and then that was just with a small investment of 97 dollars and then on Facebook today I've said um, I think I'm gonna buy a put on this and I bought two different puts. I bought one at 52.50 or 152.50, and I bought one at 160. And so I bought five five of the 52 152.50s, and I bought two contracts of the 160 puts. And today I gained more than 31 percent after hours. And I'm still in it, and I'm still going to go ahead and swing it. And it's the way I understand it. The contracts for February the 18th is when I got to get rid of it so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it back a little bit more I hopefully it'll pull back to where I can take a profit here and maybe tomorrow or maybe into next week but this is my second options trade and I'm just want to again say thank you Vegas for turning me on to this and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be BTG all right so BTG so this one here is actually a nice Canadian company. And, you know, I just want to say, sometimes um, people may think, oh, Canadian stocks are bad. Um, but they're not, because if you look at the marijuana stocks, they're all mostly Canadians. And um, sometimes on the Toronto Stock Exchange in particular, there's not always a lot of liquidity. However, it really just, just depends on the stock itself. But this one here is called B2 Gold Corp. This is a gold company, and um, I like this one because it's in a new 52-week high, and Jim's going to talk about that in a second. But if you can see here the website, Jim's showing you that. Yep. Uh, very interesting company. They got a lot of projects. Um, they, you know, they have uh, many things that they're invested in. They are um, in Nicaragua. They're in Mali. They've got, um, you know, they're into exploration and acquisitions of uh, staged precious metal properties. And what they do is they finance and build mines. And then they generate growth and gold production and cash flow. So I really do like the activity and the way that the stock is behaving at the moment. Gold is actually doing quite well in the markets. Um, so that's good to know. And as a result, it's uh, reflecting in the performance of this particular stock. So I'm gonna turn it over to Jim here because if you notice so far, um, over the last, I would say, maybe two weeks, the stock's been turning around and going into a new channel, which is super bullish. Jim, can you talk about that? Yes, I'll talk about it. All right. Let me BTG. So I'm going to pull up the 20 day. First, I'll pull up the year's chart on it. And there we go. We've had a, we're at a 52 breakout high here at 315, and today we broke out of it. I got a resistance here at three. Looks to be right around 317 right now. That's going to be the new breakout for tomorrow. And I'm going to erase this little channel right here. It's not looking the way I want it to. Well, I'll pull up the 20 day and we'll show you how the 20 day looks. So we've run into this little channel all the way up when we hit that year bottom here at 263. You see that? And this here last only oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days. We've had a breakout from 263 all the way up to 318. And I'm going to again post up this one year chart to show you what it looks like. We've had a pretty good little high here and it sold off, hit that low, bounced up, and kind of pulled back. And then we've had a little teeter totter going up and then we pulled back and then we had that eight day breakout. So I'm going to pull up the three year chart and see just what it tells me. 
Yeah, we've got some other channels we could break here, some other resistances. And I'm looking at about a 323 to a gap fill up here right around 334. And then I think she can probably go up here to about 340. And I'm going to pull up the 25 day. And I'm going to get rid of this trend line that I was looking at earlier. Kind of get a clear picture on the 5 day. And there's another channel that's just kind of rubbed up on that 5 day. So our next resistance is on this and pullbacks. Our next resistance is going to be right around 323. If we got to break this 317, then I've got another support right here that could probably pull back to about that 312 area for an entry. And if that don't hold, got a 310 and then maybe a low support right around here at 307. And I always tell everybody, don't chase the stock. Let it be patient and let it come to you and you'll get that right feeling when to jump in. So we broke out of that 52 week high and that 52 week high was at 315. So what we want to do is just have a little bitty pullback on this thing. And I'm thinking probably around 310 to 307 and that's not much. And maybe we can get a scalp play on this and then maybe we can run it up to that next resistance level at 323 and then write these down on paper so you won't forget it. And I'm going to change a little time frame here to back to a year. And we'll get those other resistances in here, 323. So let me get that three year back up here and write these down on paper. 323, 334, and 340. And then the final resistance, which would be a three year high at 350. And I don't count the wicks, I count the bases of the candles. That's where all the mustard is. And when I say mustard, I mean, I mean uh, strength. And actually I'm seeing this little hump right here so I'm going to add me another little trend line there right around 321. That's not much difference between that 323 and 321. So we could have a little resistance there at 321 and then we need to go ahead and break on up. And that's BTG. I love the chart. I love the pattern. It couldn't can pull back. You know it can pull back but let's see if we can break it up to these other two resistances that we had a couple years ago. And gold is hot right now gold is goes gold is steaming so the next one we're going to talk about is going to be g e yeah and i gotta say you know what this is great i'm really pleased with general electric you know my mom used to work there um g e you know i have to just say the news has been no. great on g e so g e uh looks like the worst might be over so the shares spiked on the fact that uh, they've had the best day in nearly a decade. Investors had relief over signs of the progress in the company's turnaround plan. Their power division, though, I will say, does remain a mess and it may not get better anytime soon. But, uh, but the reason it did well is that they did put a major question by reaching a $1.5 billion settlement with the Justice Department over their defunct subprime mortgage lender. Uh, the CEO, Larry Culp, said that uh, he's got confidence that GE will generate strong cash flow beyond 2019. One of the analysts from RBC did say that they've had such an epic unraveling, but there is value in the underlying business. It is moving past its um, old subprime disaster, and I think that's great. After horrendous 2017-18, the shares have spiked about 35% this year on hopes that the worst is over. And I do want to mention, like, you know, GE is still worth just a fraction of its all-time high, and it's one of the best performing stocks in this S&P 500 for 2019. So I think we're on to something here, and I think it's just a start. So I'm going to let Jim talk about that, because I think GE is um, looking really good. Yeah, I think the last CEO that was in charge of this company was a big mistake, and that was Mr. Emmett. I wasn't too excited about him at all. Uh, I think he had different ideas of the company, but this new under new management, we're starting to have a nice little rebound. And I'm going to pull up the chart. I'm going to let you look at it. I mean, this thing was hovering up here around 33 bucks three years ago when this guy took over, and it just nose dived, nose dived. And I'm going to pull up the year's chart. I got in this thing at $18 and took a small loss on it and sold it around 16 and gave up on it. But then back here when it hit that bottom at 666, it started to take off. 
So I'm going to pull up the 20 day chart and let you look at it. First, I want to pull up the three month, and I've got a little bit of stuff on here. I was calling this thing out down here at the bottom called the pent flag breakout when they finally had that uh had the upgrade and ever since the upgrade the stocks run pretty good it, bullish upgrade alert down here at the very bottom of it at 666 actually at 676 i called it in the room and ever since then we've kind of ran up this is on a three month chart so let me pull up the 20 day here and you'll get another visual picture on it and there we go we went from at 736 and we've had nothing. We had a pennant flag here and she broke on up. She kind of pulled back a little bit. That's what I like about this stock. It holds steady for two or three days and then pulls back. We had another three day run and it pulled back. Another three day run, then we had the big bounce to try to break that resistance at 920. By this time, people were playing, starting to play options on it. And we were going to say, is it going to go to 10? Is it going to go to 10? And I said, I don't know. So finally had the triple top uh, day before yesterday. Or yesterday, we had the triple top on that breakout. So that was the time to really be the judge if it was going to go ahead and break out. And it did after this morning. It started to take off. And that opened up everybody's eyes. And we ran this thing all the way up to 1077. And I'm going to go ahead and draw me a little resistance line at that 1077 now. And here after hours, we pulled back to that $10 mark. And that $10 is very important. I would really like to see it stick there and go ahead and bounce up and hit this double top here about, oh, or hit this top right here right around 1048. That's what I'm looking at, this top right here. So I'm going to draw me a little red line there so I can remember that tomorrow. And I draw these, I draw these blue lines almost on a daily basis as the stock runs up so I'm gonna pull up maybe a couple pullback supports if it doesn't hold that 10 and I'm thinking definitely right down here at 950 because that's a huge breakout you understand and then I'm gonna then you got some little support areas right in here after hours so let's pull up and look at the daily chart to show you how pretty it was today we went from 888 yesterday it opened right around 896 and we ran up most of the day just up to 9 920 and then we had that pre-market breakout which everybody kind of opened up our eyes and we decided this thing was going to go to our ten dollar level once it hit the morning hours it pulled back a little bit like ev like everything else kind of does and hit that 200 sma and then we, the 50-day kept above both the 100 and the 200, showing strength. And it went ahead and run up all the way up to 1077. And then we pulled back and we hit that 100 again. And then started showing a little bit of weakness once that 50 finally decided to cross down over the 100 and the 50, or the 200. And here we are starting to curl up a little bit. I think we hit a bottom support right here, right around 995. And I'm going to add another little trend line. Oh, I'm probably thinking pretty much right around 976 for a solid support. And I'm going to turn that one red so I can remember that tomorrow morning. But I'm very bullish on this stock right now. I think once we, the morning comes, it will be the final decision if it wants to run up and stay above this $10 level. And this $10 level means a lot to a lot of traders. If it can hold this support level and consolidate, start to bounce up you're probably going to get some new buyers coming in it if they didn't come in today after it broke that 10 and see here we had that double top this morning right there 10 14 and look right here where this little red line here with that 200 sma is it's right there on that 214 so that's the one we got to break tomorrow that's the resistance and if we can break that 214 we're going to carry it on up to that 248 and maybe break that 1077 sometime next week and this will probably rest a little bit after that great breakout today. But who knows, the momentum could pick up. Pick up. It is a Friday, so keep that in mind. And this is General Electric, and we are definitely, I've been bullish on this ever since it was down there at that 676 area. And that's a good $3 and some $4 bounce right there. And the next one we're going to talk about was the bonus play we played yesterday. We called out. So if everybody watched the aftermarket report, they got a little bonus on it. In Vegas, you remember? Oh, sure it did. And it ran beautifully today. So Yes. And you and you even, let's say, 
traded the stock this morning. I mean, I will say today specifically, um, the low of the day on the stock was at $2.58. And if you actually did buy the stock, because we did talk about how it was a new 52-week high, it was on a nice channel. Jim gave supports and resistance on the stock. And you know what? This broke $3 today and went as high as three twelve. So congrats if you actually traded that stock. And you know what, Jim? Maybe just give a quick update on what you still see on that chart. I I'll still think that. it looks pretty good. I was watching this stock last year. That's what these little red lines indicate. So we definitely broke out of that channel, which was right around $1.99. And we had to break that other resistance that I had up here. And I'm going to add this little blue line right here. At 223 but we had to break this last resistance I had at 228 and then we did and that's what happened right here we broke out of that channel yesterday and we went had a high of around 263 and it pulled back closed up right around 250 and Vegas called this out yesterday in the aftermarket report and here we are we bounced 50 cents on it so let me pull up the 20 day just kind of get a glance of what a 20 day looks like I, those are the tr three time frames that I usually work with is the uh, the yearly, the yearly daily, the 20 day one hour, and then the daily one minute are the three main charts that I look at it when I'm, and especially at the one minute when I'm day trading or scalping or trying to find resistances for that day. So we broke out of that little resistance pattern there at 228 and it topped there at 234. And kind of pulled back a little bit to support at 217 and then the last two days and I didn't start watching this until yesterday again and when I pulled the chart up I said Vegas I've had this on watch for a long time I just ain't pulled it up here lately because of them red lines and that's how I determine each year I try to start off with a new color pattern and that gives me an idea of what year I was looking at it and these are my extended trend lines that I've mastered over many years and so we broke out of that 287 right here it was my final resistance and I'm gonna draw a couple more resistances on here and this here what I'm looking at now is a 20 day one hour so I'm seeing 291 I'm also seeing this little spot here at 294 I'm seeing another one here at three bucks and then I'm seeing the little top here at 309 with the final resistance right around the 312 area where it it didn't have a wick so that's another solid pattern and I'm gonna pull up the daily one hour make this fast and sweet how did I get that 312 that was just the high okay that was the after hour high here 312 looking at the RSI okay so here's your daily one hour I mean one minute daily and we pulled back to that 200 which was a solid support line and after hours we're up here at 312 so we broke past that resistance that I have here at 39 and if I was gonna call this a pullback play maybe I would maybe consider this consolidated area here at 294 and if that didn't hold right down here at this other solid consolidated area which is at right around 286 287 so I wouldn't want it to go any below that 287 that's kinda like the pivot point the pivot point for that for today's daily chart for day, today's standards and good call on that Vegas that was a very nice call you bounced up 40 some 50 cents on that on that call right there and that was our yeah, bonus it was nice play. and you know stress-free like you know you got a lot of the viewers um, have messaged me on email and um, even like I said you know people sometimes you know they have another job they don't have, you know, or they even if they trade. I mean, some people find day trading very stressful, and this was a stress-free swing trade. So even if you would have woke up this morning and said, you know what, market opens, I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna put an order and buy the stock, and then you know what, I'll sell it towards the end of the day. And Jim gave a stop loss, as you guys know, of two thirty-four, and it never went there. So yep. would have been a safe trade and stress-free, and you could have sold it even just before four. Or maybe you would still be holding it today, and then you look at selling it maybe tomorrow and take your money. Yep. And so another thing, another thing is that um, they had a uh, Bur Bur Birmingham Research has a target price of this at five dollars. 
you know I don't I, I don't go by other people's targets I usually go by mine but that's just something to think about they well also remember on. when I talked about this company too I mean their earnings are record profits yes. okay they, they're a payment oh, yeah. processing company exactly. and record profits they've never in the history of the company so that is significant and that I think is what really has taken this stock to a new level and they so got we'll be watching this kids and it's a great, a great name payment data and it's paying us so i like it it has an outer performed rating on it too which is positive yes and the float's not huge either by the way no i mean so, the float's uh, 7.49 million so yeah. not a bad size so i'm really liking this one so let's get that continuation yeah let's talk about the bonus for today Okay, well, I'm going to give you guys a bonus because I'm liking these bonus plays are working out quite nicely. So your bonus for tonight is called A-T-A-X as a tax, like a tax refund. But it's called America First Multifamily Investors. That is the name of the company. And this company here, they're into mortgages and investments. And you can go to their website. They're basically a multifamily oh, investment company. And they started back in 98. And, um, you know, obviously they have a portfolio of accounts, um, mortgage revenue bonds. And uh, you can read all about them if you want to go read the website. Um, but it is a very interesting company. And um, I have to say they are managed by Burlington Capital Real Estate. And um, they, they, you know, they're committed to developing business opportunities for institutional, private, and public investors. Anyhow, uh, check this stock out because, again, I like the channel it's in. And what I like about it the most, really, is had a new 52-week closing high. I like the fact that it had a volume surge. If you guys look at the volume, because I like to look at volume. Um, I mean, today's volume was stronger than yesterday's. And uh, yesterday was 323,000. Today was 426,000. And it actually made another uh, new high and a nice closing high. So I'm really liking where it's at. Jim's probably going to talk more details where the chart's at. But this is a new 52 weeker as well. So, you know, I like these 52 weekers when I can find good setups with good volume. Okay. Uh, because I am looking for that continuation. And this stock's been up non-stop over the last three four days and i like it it's in a beautiful beautiful channel very stress-free so we can get jim to help give us some uh stop loss and support and resistance so that maybe tomorrow those of you listening that would like another swing trade um that's stress-free you can look at this one if it is of interest to you and obviously you know do your own due diligence and you got to be comfortable taking the trade yourself Okay, over yep. to you, Jim. Well, this is a TTM trend chart right here, TTM squeeze. And I noticed we popped out of that squeeze in the last three days here. It's that big old long tracking right here that when we popped out of that for the last four days. And it's real strong resistance right here if you're looking at the TTM squeeze. So we got, a, and we broke that 52 week high. And that trend's right here sitting at right around 3504 and then you got another one that popped up right around 44 so i'll put that in there so i'm going to pull this back down and i'm going to magnify this is a three-year chart so this is a three-year breakout then last year or back in 2017 we had a resistance high of 345 that's three dollars and 45 cents and this is how I look for for more resistances on a uh, 52 breakout, 52 week breakout. So I'm going to pull up the year, and you can see how beautiful that was. That breakout was right around 223, and that's happened in the last week. These are in day increments, and then I'm going to pull up the 20 day and get a final look at the 20 day. So we've had a good 20 day run on this, a low of 167 consolidated right in this area around 184 for a week and a half and then we had that breakout up to that resistance of 234 which was the 52 breakout and then here we pulled back to support level at 217 217 so then we popped out of that yesterday 
and we ran it up and we closed right up here right around 263 and she didn't give up she didn't give up she went ahead and broke on up to that 311 so that's a pretty nice beautiful little two-day breakout the volume look at the volume bars on this in the past two days how much it's increased in the past history of the 20-day chart and then there's your TTM squeeze also your trend on your TTM where it just popped up and we hit that resistance bar there at 44.45 so let's pull this up on a daily just to see if I can find anything else that find a solid support solid support that I'm looking at is going to be this 287 area I'm going to turn that into a red line so I can recognize it in the morning. If it pulls back to that area, I'll probably jump in it. But that's solid support today for today. I don't want it to go below that, but I do have a couple other trend lines that, that it could hit. And that would be the 277 to 272. And just a beautiful call, a beautiful chart to look at. I posted that website with all their fill, where all them portfolio was I mean they had a bunch on their portfolio and let's just see how P uh, oh man I'm looking at the wrong stock Vegas I can't believe this which one oh. on ATAX yeah I went back and looked at PYDS oh my mistake <laughs> my big mistake <laughs> I, don't know I what was to just say. listening to you talk, and I, you know, wasn't listening to the dollar amounts because yeah. I was looking at the, the chart. Oh, I should be slapped. Oh, We've been my at goodness. this all okay. day long, so let me start all over again. I can't okay, erase what I guys. said. Okay, sorry guys. Sorry guys. You see, this is what happens. We're running live, so Jim will repeat the ATAX chart, please. Oh boy. So let me pull this. <laughs> That's quite embarrassing. So we got six, right. 650 here, and we had to break that 650 area on a, on a yearly. And um, we broke out of that TTM squeeze. So you got a good update on PYDS, that's for sure. <laughs> Jim gave you guys a really deep, deep due diligence there. Yeah, I did. It's like a double jeopardy there. That's okay. Go ahead, Jim. Go so ahead. Here we are. We're going to look at the one year. And we broke out of that resistance level at 650. And we had a little channel there for that whole year here between 615 and 650. And then we broke out of that 650 and we closed here at 659 after hours. And I'm going to pull up the three year. Three year, even on the three year, that's it, a three month. No, that's three year. So that three that that resistance was six forty four on the three year chart. And then I'm gonna pull up the twenty day, and we've had a good twenty day run from five forty four all the way up to six fifty six, which that resistance line. And here after into close, we closed at six fifty nine. Now I really love the positive divergence that's on this stock, especially on this trend chart. Very bullish, very bullish. So keep that in mind when I'm saying very bullish. If it stays above this green line, this is a TTM trend chart right here. So I'm going to pull up to the daily. And I'm going to try to find where I think if it pulled back, and we did pull back after hours a little bit, just 656 right there. And that's only a few cents from, from the high that we closed at. And if this thing wanted to pull back, I got a support level here at, at 650. And to get a better look at it, I'm going to pull up a five-day, 15-minute. I'm going to draw me a trend line right here at 646. And yes, okay. So I'm looking at a support level on this stock. If it pulls back at any at all, that'll be 647. So this is moving up smallly, but it is moving up. And I'm going to pull up the 20-day one more time just to get a real good look at it. So we have down here. 554 and it's ran almost a whole buck in 20 days and that's pretty that's pretty consistent so we've got two support levels if it wants to pull back which it, it, it it's only done a couple of times in that 20 day period and that one right down here is 593 so we're going to look at a support level right around 640 
to 646 and we'd like to see this 659 break tomorrow so that's ATAX and I do apologize for giving you a double shot at well, at least you got to look <laughs> at a TTM trend a double shot of pits um, I also want to mention too that this stock pays dividends on ATAX so those of you that like getting dividends this might be something for you guys if someone is into dividends so might be of interest for people yep. all right well I think that was a little mouthful there. Yeah, it was. Yeah. No worries. You know, things happen. No big deal, Jim. No big deal. Yep. So I want to thank everyone for listening to our market report. This is Vegas and Jim. We won't have one on Friday, Saturday, because it's already the end of the week. Can't believe it. We're going to be February 1st tomorrow. I can't believe the month. First month of the new year is finished. And we're into February. So... We will have an update on Sunday, and um, we look forward to talking to all you, everyone on Sunday. So have a great night, an amazing weekend. Make sure to study, subscribe and follow, and we'll see you on Sunday. Have a great night. I love stocks, and I, I love options now, too. This is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. January the 31st, the last day of the month, and let's have a nice fresh start on February, and that will be starting tomorrow, and I love stocks. <laughs>